Mucho gusto bailar. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mm -hmm. All that. Nosotros papaya for sure, 100%, all day, every day, Hollywood nights. Yeah. You guys get it. Now listen, my name is Captain Bob, and I am the leader of this group. Um, I don't control you. There's no Me Too's in this invol involved in this. Mm -hmm. There's no, nothing sexual, but I am the leader, mm -hmm. and I'm your master. But there's no control. <laughs> but you're, my, you're a master. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, you get master. it. Yes. I'm your puppet master, okay? We have here, I don't even know why I do introductions, <laughs> okay, awesome. because I do it every time, <laughs> but we have Coloco, Kalila, a.k.a. We've got the beautiful Gilbert, because I always make fun of you. <laughs> thank you. So I always say flat face and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to do that right now. You have the beautiful oh, thank Gilbert. You. You, have the beautiful. you have the beautiful. You have a beautiful thank you. Gilbert. We've got um, pristine, conditioned, <laughs> right, <laughs> up to par, you know, ready to go. Sterile George. Sterile George. Sterile. <laughs> you know, we have the factory made, Sterile right? Sterile as in clean. High quality, okay. yeah. high okay. quality <laughs> George Kimmel. Wow. High quality. Or high quality. Make conditions. Okay. Squeaky clean. And we've got, again, me. Okay? <laughs> the best. The and greatest. the worst at the same time. Now, um, I cannot begin this podcast without bringing up something that happened the other day, a couple nights ago. And I'm just, there's there's no way to tell it. I just have to tell it. <laughs> there's no way to tell it, but I just have to. Tell you it. get what I'm saying, yeah, though, yeah, right? Yeah. And you don't have to because I'm traumatized. You don't have to do that right now. You're right. I'm sorry. Correct me, okay? Cause I'm your puppet master. <laughs> All right. So the other day, um, Coloco's mom, Meritus, and I, I'm going to give up some information. She cleans my house on Sundays. Can I say that? She cleans her house all the time. All the time. It's and her she does, favorite hobby She's in the better world. than Mexicans. She's better she's than... She's better than any Mexican any that would do Any robot you can make in China. She goes underneath. She goes yeah, above. she's the best. She goes in between. It's just her and favorite hobby. she cleans hobby. all the rust. Every time she dust. comes over, she has to clean. Yeah, because I'm a nasty fucker. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. I've come on the walls, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. My bad. My point is this. She's cleaning. We have... Kalila's... Um, I guess sister. She's my sister. Not biologically. She's your cousin. She's my yeah. She's technically my cousin, but my but, dad. Uh, my dad okay, it's basically. She 13, so she's my sister. Honey, his her sister, sis, quote unquote sister. My sister. And um, her two kids are here. My nieces. Jules mm -hmm. and Izzy. Mm -hmm. Izzy's about ten, and how old is Jules? Sixteen. She's sixteen. And. Um, She's so thin, she might as well not exist. <laughs> <laughs> she might as well just be nothing. Paper thin. Yeah. She is so, thin. so I'm in this podcast room because this is what the room I use when I want to enjoy a meal and want to get away from it. Mm. So I'm watching YouTube videos. I think I was watching some BGT. I just got talent. I was eating some food, mm -hmm. having a good time. And this is what I hear. Mama? Mama? Call 911! Call 911! Okay. I don't get up right away. <laughs> it takes me a second mm. to Which, absorb the information. That oh, I got. you're processing it. Okay. Right. Call 911. Call 911. Mama. You know, all that stuff. I get up. I open the door. And this is what I see. Kalila has Meritus in a Heimlich. It, is, it was a move developed by a guy named Friedrich Heimlich. By in the 1940s, I looked it up. Wow, oh, was right? And he was a um, he's a physician, but he's also it was a, a chiro. They didn't call it chiropractic, chiropractor mm -hmm. back then. And he knew the, the the instrument, the body within. And um, basically, Kalala's mom, who's Filipino, had um, taken a gigantic ball of rice. She swallowed it. You make it sound like I want to laugh, but I was, I'm was i traumatized. I, 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 I laugh because I keep looking at Kalala. Her lips keep... She ate up... Uh, right. By the way, I made up the for Friedrich Heimlich thing. You did? Oh, yeah. That's not, that's not real. Shit. Damn, oh. you're good. All right. So I, I, I apologize for the lie. Okay. Okay. Tell the story. So she got a big ball of rice. Well, little backstory. Mm -hmm. My mom has a little a form of dysphagia and trouble swallowing and rice is one of her trigger foods uh -huh. so but she's never had like a real choking incident in the past she's always just needed to kind of drink water afterwards to kind of clear her you know um her esophagus so basically i'm sorry i'm eating basically 
Meritus is blue. Dying. Kalila is giving her the Heimlich from Frederick Heimlich. Mm. And she's doing it, and she's doing it probably repeatedly like 40, 50 times. I mean, it's I think getting. It seemed like that. But as I, time goes on, right? You know that it's not going to be good. Mm-hmm. So she's like, call 911. I'm looking around. The kids are screaming, screaming. crying. My her, sister, her sister, who is a her, nurse. Her, I'm going to call her Sir William Wallace because of her bravery. Who, me? Honey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know her why. sister, I know why. Sir William Wallace, <laughs> Braveheart, <laughs> has her body completely turned away. Like, from the situation. Mum- from this, and shaking. mumbling and shaking and mumbling. She's a nurse. Yeah. She knows basic life support, but I'm telling you guys, yeah. when it's a family member, it's a different feeling. And I think I felt the same way where, like, even though I sprung into action and I was doing the Heimlich, I was so emotional and crying at the same time that I might not have been as effective as I would have been helping somebody else. And my sister's, my sister who's helped so many people in the past, mm. seriously froze, turned around, and was just shaking in a corner. Oh. She was just wanting it to if be. If you over have a heart attack or something emergency happens, you don't want honey in the situation. Well, you do because if she, if she's not, if you're not if her you're family, re- if you're related to her, you don't yeah. want her in the situation. Yeah, if you're related to her, she cannot help you. So I would see two phones on the couch now. Claire's screaming at the top of her lungs. Call nine one one. Okay. I look at the at the fucking two phones on the couch. I can't. I don't know where mine is. I go, come on, give me the phone, and no one's giving me the phone. They, they're like the phone. No one's giving me the fucking phone. The kids are screaming. Also, their phones don't have American. Service. You can't go. Let me ask you this though. You can't call nine one one on a, that kind of phone. Mm-mm. Interesting. They only operate on Wi Fi. I'm not sure actually. Yeah. Anyway, no one's handing me the phone. So you didn't have your phone on. You. I didn't know where it was. Mm. Because I didn't know this was gonna happen. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, I find I Jules runs into the bedroom. I know she's sweating, and I run in with her, and she hands me Kalila's phone. We call nine one one, and then you can hear the rice come out like it came out, yeah. flung and hit the ground. Whoa! Yeah, right? and you all you heard was <gasps> like yeah, that, finally yeah, she could took a breath. Right. I'm calling them all, and also I'm I'm gonna find this lady's name. The fucking open the door. What's going on? Dog, Dog wants in. The lady, what's her name? The what do they call it? The operator. No. That's what you call it. Yeah. Operator, yeah. The operate. How do you say it? O- <laughs> I'm kidding. Operator. The operator is a fucking <laughs> cunt. Oh, okay. Do you know I'm a cunt. Get in the ambulance, she, sir. Before I do that, I have to ask some questions first. Mm. Okay, well, go ahead. Don't talk to me like that, sir. She said that. Yeah, calm down. Right? I go, go ahead. She goes, tell me, how old is the woman? Oh, fuck this bitch. I want to fucking gouge her eyes out. I don't know. It's 58. Okay. What's going on? Call the 911. Call the ambulance. Calm down, sir. Okay, I'm calm. I mean, this is the conversation I'm having with this woman. So two minutes goes by. I try, I'm i trying to tell her what's going on. All right. Next, I, I called the ambulance. Next time, you have to just be more calm. And I just hung up on this bitch. And if I see her in the streets, I'm going to punch her vagina. Why her vagina? Because that's, I know how to do it. No. He, he knows the technique. Yeah, I know the technique. <laughs> I gouge. I, I, I go underneath. The clitoral hood. The cl- yeah. And I do the clitoral that, hood. That, the clitoral hood. <laughs> uppercut the clitoral hood uppercut yeah uh, uppercut they know they know right Bobby and knows. what I do is when I get up there and I punch right I take my two knuckles <laughs> and I clinch the clit and I pull it out ah that's right? like some Mortal Kombat you want a clit stuff. bitch anyway the ambulance comes by that time I had already are you crying at that point or what's going on I'm not you? crying I don't cry in situations like that because I'm in full fight or flight mode yeah and I have adrenaline I don't think that one can cry at that moment Um, but I was, I just like, I was so tired because I'm carrying this like, you know, adult and I'm thrusting so much like the, like, oh my God, the best of my ability and it's not working. And at that moment I felt like such a failure. Like, 
why isn't it dislodging? Yeah. And I realize now that maybe rice is a little bit harder to dislodge than like maybe a chicken bone. Mm -hmm. But still, like I was so freaked out and I might be scarred for. So the ambulance come. They do their thing. They come up. They ask questions. Should we bring her this? Should we, the hospital? She seems fine. She's Meredith is going. I'm fine. I'm okay. You know. They leave. And I just basically said, Meredith, you're not going home. You're staying here. We have to keep an eye on you. Yeah, and I spent the whole night. I made her sleep in the living room, and I watched her sleep until she woke up. Yeah. I could not. I was so frightened for my mom. And this was Mother's Day. You know, like we now, had such a good day. It was just fucking scary. I'm in the other room. Trying to sleep, and I'm thinking, what what would you think? You in the other room? Sleeping? Yeah. What would you think after an event like that? You'd probably be like somewhat traumatized. No, this is what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> False. I was not. Which he's shared with my mom, so it's what all kind good. of Asian doesn't know how to eat rice? <laughs> that's the whole thing. It's like. You're Asian. You sh that's the one thing you should know how You've to eat. You've been training since day it's one. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like it's like a Mexican choking on frijoles. Frijoles. <laughs> you mean or an Italian choking on spaghetti. Mm. You should know how to eat rice, lady. <laughs> All right, that's shameful. <laughs> that, that that there's a flaw in the thing. Yeah, yeah. In the gene. Yeah. We all okay. honestly he came out of the room. And he had this like epiphany, right? <laughs> and we were all we were all sitting in the in the chair. Yeah. And I know it was such a stressful situation, yeah. but the moment he's like, Meritus, what kind of Asian does not know how to eat rice? It was <laughs> This is right everyone after. just like This is not I'm not doing it as a joke, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. This is like I need to know the answer. We yeah. burst out laughing so hard and it was such like a much needed like comedic relief, relief yeah. at that moment. So at five in the morning Kalila comes back into my room to sleep. No, it's like eight in the morning. Eight, well, eight in the morning. I can't sleep. I haven't slept the whole time. Mm. I'm just laying there. She lays next to me, and then I close my eyes, and I, she's asleep, and I just start weeping. I start crying. I it was I was so traumatic. I've never been in it. I to see her mom blue, almost dying, right, and just you know. It, it it is it it put my life it, it was a, a, an awakening I had about how fragile life is and all that stuff. And more importantly, my mom is somebody who's so regimented, and because she suffers from OCD and she has like very like high anxiety and a lot of fears, so her life is very calculated, and she never takes risks ever. She's when I ask her if she wants to travel with me, she's always like, "No, I don't fly." She doesn't do a lot of things because she has fear. And I told her, what does this tell you? You were in the company of your family. You were eating rice and you almost died. I don't care how what what measures you take to not die. You can die in, in, in the comfort of your own home. So you might as well start living. And I think it changed her a little bit. She's like, you know and what? You're also, right. you just don't die from eating rice <laughs> because I, that's I, on your tombstone, <laughs> right? That's how you're remembered. Okay. Car accident, yeah. right? You know, a terrorist attack. Yeah. You know, something like that, mm -hmm. right? Not eating rice. What would it say on the tombstone? Bitch died from eating rice. Bobby Lee. By Bobby Lee. By Bobby Lee. <laughs> By Bobby Lee. Paid extra $1,000 yeah, yeah. for that. I'd spray paint that on there. <laughs> okay. What was my face like? Oh my, oh, it's like, you know what, guys? What was traumatic also about it is the way, as time went on, she has her mom in the Heimlich, mm -hmm. and it's not dislodging. And the, you know, it just, as time goes on, the more panic, right? And the screaming. People are screaming at the top of their lungs. Gosh. It was, um, you know, it was the most traumatic thing I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of things. But that, because I do love Meritus, and obviously I love Kalila, and um, I'm just glad it ended in that way mm -hmm. because in any other way we'd be not doing this right now yeah we'll never i'll never be the same after Me either. that I, uh, that's after i went to mitzi's funeral yeah it was right, oh, after. right after i went to mitzi mitzi shore's funeral and i spent five hours four hours there and to, to and then to witness that oh my god yeah it was fucking damn 
home. That's why we're recording on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. Yeah, because we couldn't because do it yesterday. Like yesterday, we just needed time to decompress and sure. sort of find a way to make light of it, which is really hard. Like the turnover, because I was like, okay, like how how do I shake this feeling of like I, I just keep running it back in my head? Could I have done better? Could I have been more effective, faster, less panicked? You know. And then we were both feeling like shit. So what Bobby did, which was like the nicest thing ever, is that he took everybody that was in that room that day, and he took us on Gallo- He took us on a field trip to Little, to Tokyo. Little Tokyo, and we had such a blast. Last and we night. went to the restaurant, and, and, I, and I said no rice for her. <laughs> <laughs> did I not? I said you no, did. no. I said the waitress. And then we all no, no under any conditions, <laughs> no rice for them. And they're like, well, they're Asian too. They're so confused. How come no for us? That's all we saw because she could die. And we were just watching her chew the whole chew time. Chew the whole time. <laughs> but when we came home, it felt lighter. That's it felt well, like, but you okay. know, I, one of the kids' shoes. Yeah. We went some shopping. We, you know, there was like a little that one guy. There's one guy there in the Tokyo Plaza. Uh-huh. He's you know he's that one man band guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He sing, you know he has a drum machine and nine keyboards and he's singing in Japanese. I danced. You know. Yeah. I celebrated life that day. May I say something? Yeah. Go ahead. A couple years ago, when there was a woman in need in Seattle, okay, oh yeah, <laughs> um, you didn't spring into action, and I remember you saying, "I'm not going to call. I don't want to be that person who calls 911 oh, yeah. because I don't want to sign papers and do all that." Let me just say that you came through for me so hard. There's a difference between some random white lady I don't fucking know, yeah, <laughs> all right, and your mom. No, but you know what? Like you could have froze. My, I did my, fry. I did freeze for a second, but not like, honey, the, not like honey. No, I was like, "Where's the fire? Where's the fire?" You know what I mean? But I was you were doing, you were trying, and then when you went, I heard you screaming at the operator. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were my ally in that moment, and I, I honestly, I, I like, don't. I, I'm try, I think you're trying to give me props, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm still a coward. I'm still weak. I don't think you're a coward. All right, at all. but <laughs> and that woman in in Seattle, I'll still be playing Candy Crush. <laughs> Know that. Know that. But I don't know the lady. If he doesn't know you, he's not coming to your rescue. I might. I don't know. But this, if that lady in Seattle would have died, it would have been weird. Yeah. I'd be like, ah. Oh. If your mom would have died, it would have been, it would have been so devastating that it's life altering. She wasn't mm-hmm. gonna die. Not under my watch. I would have kept working and working and working. Yeah. And I, even if she had passed out, I still would have. Got done compressions. I would have not stopped. And Mitzi's, but Mitzi's funeral was great. By the way, I want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I don't. You, we, you've heard me talk about Mitzi and whatnot, but um, they finally had her thing Sunday, and um, I, I just talked to Natasha Legero and Moshe Kasher like an hour, a couple hours ago. They were there too as well, and they said something that they go that was probably. One of the greatest nights, not that Mitzi had died. I mean, we got to celebrate her death, mm-hmm. but just in terms of like bonding and unity, it was really cool, man. It was like I sat next to Jim Carrey. Whoa! Uh, it was Al Magical, me, Jim Carrey, Kevin Christie, Whitney Cummings, Natasha. Everyone was in our area, and you you got to see all the legends go up and talk about Mitzi. Because I'm from a later generation, so they were telling stories from the 70s and 80s, and um, it was Jimmy Walker, Yakov Smirnoff, Dice, um, Mike Binder. I mean, all these guys, and it was, a fu- it was insane. And I saw some people that I didn't want to see, but that was like neutral ground, mm. you know. That was neutral ground, and it was a really cool. You know, it was a mix of like superstars and open micers, and it was a really cool night. And it made me realize that um, at the end of the day, I've had an amazing life. I mean, this the her mom was the thing. It, you know, you, you just kind of reflect and you go, my life is so amazing, and I don't really. You know, sit there and 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 appreciate it because, you know, I have that ism, that thing that wants more and where's mine and fuck that guy and all that stuff, and I don't know if I want to live like that anymore. I I think that, you know, these two events, 
in one day, it just kind of, you know, put a perspective on things. 